Now that the old year has passed and the new year is at hand, let us strive to do things differently and be always your best self. As you continue to pen those New Year's resolutions, remember the importance of your mental health. Happy you could join us for another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I am Adrian Atkinson. Today we kickstart the observance of Earthquake Awareness Week under the theme, Drop, Cover, Hold. Earthquake readiness is within your control. We have this and so much more on the other side of this break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. On Gather Facts this week, we remind you of the new Firearms Prohibition, Restriction and Regulation Act 2022 that is in effect. Welcome to Get the Facts, the program that provides you with information on government's policies and initiatives. I'm Theodore Henry. Establishing a framework that prohibits the illicit trading of firearms and ammunition and distinguishing the regulation of items that are lawfully acquired and duly registered. These are the objectives of the Firearms Prohibition, Restriction and Regulation Act 2022. A lot of information is laid out in the Act, but our abled guest will break down the information clause by clause. She is Director of Corporate Communications and Client Relations at the Firearms Licensing Authority, FLA, Beverly Robinson. Welcome to the program, Ms. Robinson. Thank you for having me. All right. So, I mentioned right at the start, there are two of the major goals of mm. this new act or this updated act. Mm. Are there any other goals of it apart from? Well, to uh, allow for a framework for the efficient, uh, would say, management of the, the private firearm industry in right. Jamaica. Okay. Right. All right. So let's jump into the... the, the, the clauses. I'm sure you would recommend that everybody reads the thing for themselves. Yes, we all need to read it. <laughs> all right, well, let me ask you some specific things. Now, part two of the Act looks at the prohibitions in respect of firearms and ammunition. Mm -hmm. What are some of the key changes in this area? Um, well, uh, there are issues such as stockpiling. Mm -hmm. So um, you're not allowed to stockpile neither ammunition nor okay. firearms okay. and if you do then the penalty is going to be life imprisonment oh, as a private citizen right 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 um, uh, the discharge of your weapon mm -hmm. must only be in protection of yourself or your personal property right. or in protection of someone else and their personal property or in the unusual case that you're protecting your property from a trespassing animal. Mm. Um, therefore, um, gun salutes right. are an offense. Christmas time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, for events, um, you know, we, uh, we have this habit, some firearm license holders um, and illegal firearm license holders um, of celebrating with their firearms right. and um, the sanctions, the penalties are very, very harsh and it is an offense. There is also um, a tendency um, uh, during special times of the year when we celebrate special events right. for you know people to attend events and Nobody's too sure who has the licensed firearm. It's probably with a brother or mm. it is probably secured in some container somewhere. Right. Um, that is illegal and it's an offense. What, what's the legal way of going about that? The, 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 your firearm, the act specifically states where your firearm should be stored at all times. Okay. So it must either be in a holster on your person uh, in a safe at your home, and uh, the word safe right. is the operative word, <laughs> not in the drawer or underneath the bed right. or underneath the mattress, safe. right, right, yeah. or with the FLA or with a police station. Mm. So anywhere else it is placed, 
you're committing an offense. Uh, you had mentioned not with a brother. The, the holster has to be on, on you. The, right. The license. Right, 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 right. Understood. And if your firearm is lost or stolen, then the duty is on you to report it to the police the minute you discover that it is lost or stolen. We're going to talk. On some. the other hand, if right. you find a firearm, <laughs> okay. then the, or, or you, you co come in possession of a firearm by whatever reason, then your duty, that's a duty on you, whether you are a, a license holder or um, if it's not your firearm and you're a license holder, then right. you have a duty to report it to the police. Um, you may be a medical person who is on a scene and you get in contact. Your duty is to report it to the police. And if you you're a fireman, well, your on. duty is to report it to the police. You said duty. So it is a duty. So, so there are the legal act, ramifications. Yes, in the act, it yeah. is clearly defined as a duty. Uh, right, 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 right. Can we go back a little bit? You had mentioned in the when we were looking at part two, the prohibition in respect of firearms and ammunition, that stockpiling Yes. not a thing. What constitutes a stockpile? Stockpiling is having uh, firearms that you're not authorized. So let's say a licensed firearm holder. Right. The only firearms you're supposed to have are those that you're authorized to have. Mm -hmm. And by authorized, we don't mean that you, you, you got your license 10 years ago and you're still authorized. Right. Authorization means that you have renewed mm -hmm. your license. It also means that you have come in and you have had your license registered. Oh, okay. Right. So that is authorized. All right. Right. And the other level of authorized we're going to move to under the act is that your firearm will be marked. Right, so every privately owned firearm in Jamaica will have a unique marking that will be engraved by the FLE. Mm. So that is another uh, a new provision under the Act. Right. Right, so the FLE already has the machines, mm -hmm. and so that is a process that will be starting very soon. Ah, mm. understood. Any, any mm. other new additions or changes? Well, if you, tr if you try to remove the markings that are placed on the firearm, yes. then it's an offense. I'm looking here also at the fact that uh, there is a restriction in respect of firearms and mm -hmm. ammunition. Is that, does that contain different clauses from the prohibitions in respect of the firearms and ammunition? Um, the restrictions have to do with where and how and under what circumstances you may use a firearm. Uh, right, okay. right, 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 right. So, so like we spoke about discharging your firearm in a public space, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the restrictions would say, save in the event that you're protecting your life, you're protecting the life of someone, you're protecting your property, you're protecting the property of someone, mm -hmm. you have a trespassing animal, um, you have gotten authority from the FLE, to do so, mm -hmm. or um, I think that, that li literally covers it. That covers it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Right. We're not done yet with this conversation. Okay. We're a bit more facts to get. Okay. And the conversation with Miss Robinson continues on the other side of this break. It's a very interesting conversation. So please, stay with us. Jamaicans, look on the murder rate. You think that normal? We need to get every illegal gun and save our country. Welcome back to Get the Facts. We are discussing key changes in the new Firearms Act 2022 with Ms. Beverly Robinson, Director of Corporate Communications and Client Relations at the Firearms Licensing Authority, FLA. Ms. Robinson, we were discussing the Act and I know that there have been some changes mm -hmm. contained in the Act in mm -hmm. relation to the FLA itself. Mm -hmm. What are some of those changes? Um, well, within the context of the FLA, we are now empowered to put markings um, on firearms. Right. Um, and that is revolutionary because what it means is that if a licensed firearm is used to, co to conduct any kind of illegal activity, it will be easily traced mm -hmm. because in addition to the markings we also are doing ballistic testings on the firearms under the act we are also empowered to do that so we can trace 
um, bully casings and warheads. Hmm. So this is prior, to, so, so in a practical sense, I'm mm -hmm. coming into possession of a, a weapon. Mm -hmm. Before that is in my possession, mm -hmm. uh, the marking is done, mm -hmm. the ballistics are taken, mm -hmm. so it's on file right. before it comes into exactly. my possession. Exactly. And in addition, um, a register is being kept by the Institute of uh, Forensic Medicine, yeah. um, IFSLM. Right. Right. And they will be the registrars for all the legal firearms that are in Jamaica. So those yeah. owned by the JCF, those owned by the JDF, yeah. and those which uh, are licensed with the FLA. Privately. Right. So you will see that there, this, the, the net effect of this is a tightening up, right, so of the management, the right, 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 of the legal firearms. Ah. Right. All right. right. And any, any other changes in FLA? Just those major well, ones. well, I would say that I see as a major change right. um, because it will uh, entail uh, expansion of our ballistic unit. Mm -hmm. uh, we have technical expertise in ballistics at the FLA okay. and that that will expand that function, that department, um, given the, the scope of the work that is needed to be done. Uh -huh. Because those persons who already have firearms, those will also be marked. So those that are coming in will be marked and ballistically tested mm -hmm. and the existing ones will be marked as well and ballistically tested. Uh, well, a, a number of them have already been ballistically tested. We so have started it's the process, it's, okay. it's going forward. Right, right. In addition, uh, we now require license for other categories. So our, our uh, mandate has been expanded to provide license for manufacturers, for brokers, firearm brokers, firearm manufacturers, are those who will be allowed to manufacture firearms and ammunition in Jamaica. This is and, new. Right, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And sell them in Jamaica. Um, there are also gun license clubs mm -hmm. that are associations or unions that um, have common interest um, and, and are solely for the purpose of you know, gun activities, recreational right. activities, etc. Right. Then there are the range operators and the range owners, and each category will also require to have licenses. I noticed you made a right. distinction. Right. Of right. Ago, <laughs> there are, right, owner. right. There is a difference yes. because you can own the range and not be operating it. The day to day. So, right, right. The day to day it. running of it. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're the operator, you will require a license. And if you're the owner, you will also require a license. Ah. Another category of uh, industry players uh, who will not require a license are the trainers. Mm -hmm. Because before, they were just FLA approved trainers, but now they will be licensed. So they will be required to uh, apply for licenses. Right. Right. I, I'm, I'm noticing that while this is an act, and many times we have gotten the impression that acts mean more restrictions, mm -hmm. I recognize that this act makes provision for new business. Absolutely. In Absolutely. There is also the transshipment permit that can be authorized by the Minister of National Security. Right. So if you are, for example, moving firearm and ammunition, um, and say you stop at Jamaica and you're on board and you put on, 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 on another ship, mm -hmm. then that, that you need a permit for transit, you also need a permit. Uh. So, so yes, it, 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 it is, it is uh, tightening up the, 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 the industry in terms of effectively regulating and ensuring compliance with the act. Right, but it's also an opportunity um, for for industry players and people outside of the industry to right. to, 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 to to join in. Ah, it sounds very comprehensive. Right, and mm -hmm. I have to ask, mm -hmm. and I'm sure many of our guests will have this question: mm -hmm. Has anything changed about the application process for having a firearm? 
in term well the application process remains the same okay right the oh. process remains the same yes. and uh, people are able to download an application uh, on our website right and um, all the new firearm act is there as well and we also have a call center mm. you can follow us on social media uh, Facebook uh, Twitter uh, IG Instagram right, right? and um, you can also find us on Google Maps and you can ask us questions right. on Google Maps. So the point I'm making is that we are accessible Everywhere. and whatever information you need, you can just call and we will provide it. Indeed. indeed. Right. One of our, 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 our rules um, under the new act is public education. Mm -hmm. So that and we have already started, as you're aware, in, yes. in, in, in the, the, the Jamaican market space, um, you know, just informing and educating about the new act, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And well, we have, I, I feel informed and I know I'm that, happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that those who are watching have gotten quite a bit of the facts, but there's so much more to, 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 to yes. suss out of this. Yes. We haven't touched a lot of the act. Yes. And again, the encouragement is read the act. Yeah. And it's, it's on available. FLA's website. Yes. <laughs> and we also post on the act, uh, on our social media platforms. Okay. Right. So if, so you, if you follow us, you will be in the you loop. You'll get it. <laughs> if you are either a licensed gun owner or you're interested in, in becoming so, it's critical, crucial that you read this thing for yourself and understand what's being done. So for more information, you may also contact the Firearms Licensing Authority by phone. It's 876-927-5158. And all the other ways that Ms. Robinson has laid out, social media, there will be contact forms on the website, emailed. You can use all these methods to get directly in touch. This has been Get the Facts. Our guest has been Director of Corporate Communications and Client Relations at the Firearms Licensing Authority, FLA, Beverly Robinson. Thank you for watching. And until next time, I'm Theodore Henry. Take good care. An earthquake is one of the many natural disasters that can strike at any time. So it's important to always be prepared and remember the drill, drop, cover, and hold. Here's a reminder of the history left behind in the aftermath of the 1962 earthquake. It's been over 300 years and marks of the 1692 earthquake still linger on the city it struck the hardest. Port Royal was one of the busiest and wealthiest ports of the West Indies and infamously labeled the wickedest city of the period owing to its reputation for piracy and smuggling. But when 1692's powerful quake struck the area, it submerged most of Port Royal under 40 feet of water. There were three separate shocks with increasing intensity, and that's the story that many know. But the wrath of the earthquake spread far beyond that city, even onto a place called Judgment Cliff in St. Thomas. The cliff is seated in the Landaway community, and if you look closely, you'll notice that a section of it is completely gone. Judgment Cliff got its name from the story of how an entire community was wiped out during the 1692 earthquake. That story has passed down through generations in the community and it's one residents readily recount to curious visitors. The Judgment Cliff, I was informed that they used to have a plantation up there run by a serious, wicked and slave master. Imposed Jacobian measures on the farmers and one of the reasons why they, they resided on the cliff that in, in, in case the slave wanted to run away, they would have difficult, difficulty in doing so. The place collapsed. I guess during the same time, um, Port Royal earthquake was taking place. That was 1692. Then say, when it happened, it's at night. Well, what I really know, you know is they, they say a man, a rooster, and a bull seal. The man gone out down wild. The rooster fly off of the roost. The bull broke down the pen, gone out. Gone wild, same like the man. Understand? 
it was a plantation to people who really lived there too. Everybody get covered out. It's a history long written, but Judgment Cliff stands as just one example of the aftermath of an earthquake. And as scientists warn of the possibilities of an increase in earthquakes globally, it's a history that could easily be repeated. In the Caribbean, we can say we had our fair share of seismic activities. Did you know that not all fats are created equal? Mm -hmm, yes, fats from nuts and fruits like pears help fuel the body. But fats from processed foods don't do your body well. Watch this next feature to find out more. The human brain is 60% fat. Fats provide a storehouse of energy for the body and promote normal cell growth and healthy skin. Fat also acts like a cushion and heat regulator to protect the heart, liver, and other vital organs. And as most people would know, fat adds flavor to our food and helps us feel full longer. It is clear that having fat in our diet is beneficial in many ways, but too much or the wrong kind can be equally harmful. Fat is a source of essential fatty acids which help the body absorb vitamins A, D and E. There are three types. Monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fatty acids are both considered good fats. The third, saturated fatty acid, is what we are often encouraged to avoid or lower our intake. So too, trans fat, which is created by a process called hydrogenation that makes the fat harder at room temperature to increase the shelf life. What is in our foods impact on the quality of our lives. The World Health Organization recommends that trans fat intake be limited to less than 1% of total energy intake, which translates to less than 2.2 grams per day with a 2,000 calorie diet. Studies have shown that saturated fat increases the amount of bad cholesterol or LDL in the blood and has no effect on the good cholesterol, HDL. Trans fatty acids increase the amount of bad cholesterol in the blood and also reduce the amount of good cholesterol. Diets high in these bad fats are linked to obesity, heart disease, and other cardiovascular related problems. Trans fat also causes malformation of cell membranes and other cell structures in the body, leading to weak cell walls and abnormal cell function. They are not recognized by enzymes and can cause neural degeneration and diminished brain function. So why then is trans fat used? Well, taste and economics. Trans fat makes food stay fresh on the shelf longer and improves food texture and flavor stability. Based on a 2021 assessment of the fatty acids in commonly consumed foods in Jamaica, our intake is very high. If you look at confectionery, you see how high the percentage is um, there and it, it comes down in several of the other food products. Okay, this is just the percentage that have trans fat. Notice that the canned foods had none at all, or the beverages that we looked at had no trans fat. Okay, um, but this is just saying whether there was trans fat in the product. What we are even more interested in is which products had high levels of trans fat. In terms of the highest concentrations, more than 2% of fat as trans fat, we see the dairy products and it goes down like that. And then when we now look at those that had the same products that had high saturated fat along with the trans fat, um, we see the figures here. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is looking to change this and encourage better food production and consumption practices. Healthier alternatives can be used that do not affect the taste or the cost of food. Knowing what is in our food is part of the way forward. It is a lifestyle change to come through education, product reformulation, regulation, food labeling and monitoring. The elimination of industrially produced trans fats is, a, is part 
of a comprehensive policy package to prevent diet-related NCDs, which comprises mandatory food labeling, ingredients lists, nutrition panels, declaring trans fats, interpretive front of package labeling based on nutrient profiles, restrictions on food marketing aimed at children and adolescents, mandatory standards for healthy food served in schools, and limits on sugar content. It's not just about our resolve to do the right thing to consume what is in our best interest. That in and of itself is a challenge because we have to now nudge, encourage, motivate, and in some instances legislate, I believe, certain types of actions to, to encourage better quality of life from a nutrition consumption standpoint. I think it is essential to advocating in the first instance for voluntary compliance as an immediate response. As consumers, we have the choice of using naturally occurring unhydrogenated vegetable oils such as canola, safflower, sunflower or olive oil. We can also limit red meat and choose lean cuts. It is also recommended that we steam, boil or bake foods instead of cooking them in fats or oils. Another approach is to choose low-fat dairy products, poultry and fish, and purchase processed foods made with unhydrogenated oils rather than partially or hydrogenated vegetable oils or saturated fats. Use soft margarines as a substitute for butter and choose soft margarine over the harder stick forms. Limit consumption of commercially fried foods and baked goods made with shortening or partially hydrogenated vegetable oils. Not only are these high in fat, but it is also likely to be trans fat. And cut back on foods high in dietary cholesterol. Let's eat healthy and live well. Let us resolve our family disputes peacefully. A family is a circle of love, support and strength. Violence has no place. Mental health problems don't define who you are. They are something you experience. You walk in the rain and you feel the rain, but you are not the rain. Words from Matt Haig. Taking care of your mental health is very important, so if you recognize you're not feeling like yourself, seek help. members of the church and indeed in the society experiencing all kinds of crisis in your lives but you're not recognizing them as such and you're not recognizing that an intervention somebody to sit and talk with you not just about your spiritual well-being your spirit but anything at all and the pastor is well trained this is part of what they call the pastoral duty to help you with all any kind of problem. They may not be able to give you money. But believe me, just this process of finding someone to talk to. Now, I know a lot of that is being done in the church. But we Jamaicans, we have a cultural thing about us. Where we believe we're little, but we're talawa. We can take on problems that are bigger than us. We don't need nobody to help us with anything. We little but with Talawa, we can take on the problems. And it is particularly the case for our men. They keep the problems inside, they don't talk about it, and it boils up. We need to start a public education campaign, not just from the government, not just from the Ministry of Health, but also from our churches and other organizations and entities to get our Jamaicans to change this culture of not trying to seek help when they are in crisis. For the point of just offloading, break down and cry helps you to get over it and get past it and to develop the inner strength and the renewed hope and faith that you will overcome the crisis. So the government will be pursuing a di direct and deliberate program with the churches to have a more robust intervention to support mental health in the country.
We've come to the end of today's show, but you can rewatch this and other offerings by visiting our website, jis.gov.jn. Be sure to join us again tomorrow on the same station as we bring you another exciting installment of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. See you next time. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.